Good afternoon, everyone, and um, we are really glad to be here with you. And I will now briefly introduce our presentation. Uh, CDs are nowadays, as we stated in the uh, introduction of our abstract, uh, and, and always have been a unique place for the culture and stratification, as I try to uh, represent with this icon, uh, uh, referring to both material and the material uh, heritage. In this context, graffiti and descriptions represent source capable of uh, carrying the traces of um, the memories of human passage, uh, like history, traditions, and memory. Uh, graffiti are commonly um, considered as a social culture manifestation which aroused in antiquity. Uh, so, inscriptions and graffiti uh, identify people's expressions and desire to preserve their voices and thoughts over time. Uh, our research project is developed within Rome, uh, which is a place characterized by deep culture certification. Uh, we try to map some scripture um, and graffiti in order to build uh, itiner itineraries of creation and dissemination throughout the city. So, starting from finding the presence of these uh, traces in architecture, we'd like to uh, give a voice back to those places, rediscovering and experiencing places as token cities. Now, uh, before entering our study, a point must be made about the difference between graffiti and uh, inscriptions. Uh, both uh, inscriptions and graffiti uh, are forms of engravings, of course, um, involving the removal of the material. Uh, but, uh, however, the term engraving is more appropriate, technically speaking, for inscriptions. Uh, while scratch is uh, a better term for, for graffiti. Uh, inscriptions are creating uh, using specialized tools on materials that can withstand the test of time, resulting in a certain depth in the materials. On the other hand, uh, graffiti is made using improvised tools, uh, such as any sharp object on a, on a surface, uh, or they can be made uh, by painting. In terms of purpose, inscriptions serve a celebratory or commemorative uh, function, uh, for example, for events or notable uh, individuals, while graffiti is uh, an unauthorized uh, and non-institutionalized form of spontaneous uh, expression. Sorry for that, for that now that we are back. Uh, so, uh, Numerous studies have been conducted, uh, which can be primarily uh, categorized into four distinct areas, each uh, with its uh, own unique characteristics. Uh, certain studies take a more general approach, focusing on understanding uh, themes, techniques, uh, historical context, and uh, geographical distribution. As we delve into more specific domains, uh, it becomes evident that the most ex extensive body of research is centered around paleography, uh, which entails the study and evolution of different writing styles. In the field of survey and uh, representation, closely intertwined with paleography, researchers examine uh, techniques for identifying these artifacts um, and processing the associated data. Uh, consequently, some of these studies try to communicate their findings to a broader audience, including non-experts, uh, employing methods such as augmented reality to enhance comprehension. Um, here, uh, we aim to showcase through a limited sample of European examples, the extent of ancient graffiti's prevalence. Uh, in this case, we have chosen examples from different historical periods to highlight how research in this field can be adapted to various territories and time periods. Uh, the multitude of case studies, even on a global scale, would allow for a significantly broader scope for research. 
regarding the Italian territory, uh, which was the primary focus of our initial initial research, a wide array of examples can be can be found. In this slide, we aim to provide illustrative instances by highlighting these um, three cases that are perhaps the most extensively studied in Italy. Uh, Pompeii, in particular, uh, stands out for its remarkable diversity, uh, both for themes and um, the diversity of techniques, um, and the sheer ab abundance of examples, which make it a unique case worldwide. Uh, the richness and significance of Pompeii's graffiti contribute to its uniqueness uh, as a subject of intense scholarly investigation. Now for the case studies. Uh, of course, the case studies are numerous with different dates, uh, and they present a diverse range of characteristics influenced by the artistic and cultural context of the time. Um, hence, the first step was to identify three primary types uh, that are uh, the scratches, um, that is the act of etching surfaces using painted objects and uh, represent the main category. Then we have painted sign or charcoal signs that are created by using paint or charcoal to trace symbols, messages or images on surface. Uh, and then we have uh, the engravings that are typically found on marble or stone and are concise inscriptions in prose or verse. Mm -hmm. um, once the main types were established, a further classification was applied based on the contents of this communication. Hence, five subsets were identified. And these subsets are uh, the testimony that comprehends signature and messages. Uh, and then we have politics, religion, and historical events of various kinds. Another important step was to create a map of all the locations in order to identify their distribution across Rome. Uh, this process pointed out the complexity of identifying routes of access for uh, different artifacts. Um, in fact, uh, they are across various distant locations, as you can see. Uh, but they are also situated in diverse architectural contexts. In fact, some of them are in uh, inaccessible areas, thereby presenting varying conditions for viewing. And this is one of uh, the reasons why we selected the four case studies highlighted in this map that you can see. Uh, the first case study um, that we analyzed is the 1640 graffiti um, on the 1277 Tulud marker between uh, beneath the Anco de Banchi. And this is an inscription engraved on stone. Um, another one, uh, here we can see um, graffiti dating back to 1496 uh, at Palazzo Altems. And in this case, the scratches were made on the fresco in the Sala della Piattaia. Uh, at San Lorenzo e Lucina, among the numerous examples that we found, we analyzed uh, in particular an inscription from the second century uh, found in the front portico. And um, in the end, at Santa Sabina, we analyzed uh, this second century graffiti uh, that is located in the crypt and associated with the cult of Isis. Okay, now we move on on uh, the phases related to the acquisition of these artifacts. Um, <laughs> for the acquisition, we use the Canon EOS 1100D and the Nikon D610. The first case, the one at Arco de Bangui that was introduced by Julia, presented relatively few challenges as it was located outside uh, beneath a vaulted surface, so it is accessible to anyone. However, due to the elongated rectangular shape of the object, it was not possible to capture it in its entirety while maintaining a good image resolution. Therefore, we decided to take a series of close-up shots, which were later stitched together during the processing phase. Uh, we made several attempts, uh, as you can see, starting with a simple collage in Photoshop, 
which was approximate from a metric standpoint, but effectively gave back the image in its entirety with good definition. Uh, secondly, the frames were processed using the structure promotion uh, software metasheet, aligning them through the identification of homologous points. Uh, subsequently, a text-to-mesh model was constructed and appropriately oriented to approximate the world's plane, uh, which allowed us to create the orthophoto that you can see in the slide. On the right, you can observe the discrepancy in blue and red between the image process in Photoshop and the orthophoto. Uh, from a metric perspective, in terms of studies uh, that can be conducted on the object, uh, there are discrepancies, particularly in the lower part. But uh, for communicative purposes, we believe that the first image is equally effective and less time uh, expensive. Um, regarding the second case study, Palazzo Altens, we proceeded by capturing both overall and detailed photographs. Uh, some challenges encountered included the large size of the fresco, uh, which necessitated the acquisition of detailed images. Uh, the lighting from the side windows, which was corrected in post-production, and the fact that... Uh, okay. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. And the fact that um uh, access was only allowed through museum visits so it's not accessible to anyone it's not a public place um we tested various image processing techniques also in this case including isolating description in post production and overlaying it with transparency onto the photo as well as placing it against a white background to enhance legibility uh, the case of Santa Sabina is the more complex, uh, both due to the difficulty of accessing the crypt uh, that is accessible only by appointment and the filming conditions. Um, due to the lack of natural light, uh, we had to use ISO settings uh, around 30 to 100 and 6400 and relatively slow shutter speed. Uh, additionally, the limited space uh, um, made it impossible to capture it uh, in its entirety uh, without an ultra-wide um, lens angle, uh, angle lens. However, this type of lens would have resulted in barrel distortions in the photograph. Uh, to overcome these problems, we decided to take photos in sections and ensuring that the optical axis remained approximately um, perpendicular to the world's plane. Uh, we used the lens with a focal length of uh, 23 millimeters. Uh, during the post-processing stage, we needed to merge the various partial shots together. Um, initially, we attempted uh, photographic stitching, but it resulted in significant errors, in particular in the uh, upper part of the graffito. And consequently, we conducted a second attempt uh, using structured promotion system uh, with, um, as well with uh, MetaShape software. By aligning the frames and extracting a dense cloud of points, we obtained a texture mesh model and we appropriately oriented the model to approximate the world's plane on which the graffiti was situated, resulting in a high resolution of the mosaic. However, it's worth noting that the condition here described posed uh, a lot of limitations, as neither the lighting nor the distance to the subject were optimal. Uh, while SFM were, was useful in this particular case, it's not necessarily indispensable for studying graffiti and description since they are primarily two-dimensional objects with uh, irrelevant depth. Um, in San Lorenzo Lucina, we encountered uh, two different conditions. Uh, first of all, I will show you some examples from the underground basilica, uh, and then an example from the exterior portico. The case I am presenting to you is certainly the most challenging in terms of legibility of the signs. Uh, additionally, the underground basilica is only accessible by appointment, 
and also locating um, uh, the graffiti is very difficult because of the readability. Um, moreover, the absence of natural light and the inability to descend to the level of the graffiti as this is not a walkable area. Um, uh, presented challenges uh, similar to those uh, I mentioned before for the case of uh, Santa Sabina. However, the small size of the graffiti area made it possible to capture it with a single frame. In this case, during post-production, we worked on enhancing contrast and highlighting the marks. In this specific case study, the marks refer to numbers written in Roman numerals. Uh, within the underground basilica, there are numerous uh, inscriptions uh, on which we tested the use of um, grazing light to increase the shadows and consequently the contrast between the letters and the, um, and the support. Uh, in this case, uh, of course, they were easier to identify compared to the graffiti I showed you before. Uh, as previously mentioned, the case of the portico was certainly the most favorable in terms of lighting condition and accessibility. Uh, and I present to you now one of the first stands uh, uh, inside the port, the portico. Uh, the shooting conditions, as I said before, are ideal since the light is diffuse and not direct. In addition, the space in front of it is very large and so it allowed us uh, an optimal shot planning. The acquisition was divided into two different phases. The first one consisted of a simple photograph at a distance useful to optimize the size of the acquisition frame. And next, we took the main measurements of the artifacts. Although they, uh, there were some problems defining the, uh, which was the boundary of this object, uh, because they were poorly visible and blunt. In the second phase, we took a series of photos with a 60% of overlap um, in horizontal and vertical direction. And the single, the single photograph was rectified and scaled according to geometric, uh, geometric rectification, and it's the second example. And uh, while the uh, photogrammatic set, set, the one with the 60% of overlap, uh, was oriented within the MetaShift program. And let us extract the auto image, that is the first one. Then we try to extract significant information from the description. First, the image was contrasted to make it the recognizability of the letters more evident. And at this stage, we proceeded with manual cleaning to implement the readability of the letters. In this case, the use of AI uh, algorithms could be interesting and useful and could let us recognize and extract known shapes beyond the edge variation undergone all time. Uh, the image with the lettering ser uh, will serve as a starting point for further studies. Uh, now, um, reflecting on the research possible developments and outcomes, uh, for communication and dissemination purposes, we have designed some proposals. Uh, among these, there is the possibility to, of creating an interactive digital archive that can be modified and expanded to include territories be beyond the city of Rome and, of course, of Italy. Uh, in this perspective, our aim is not to create a mere collection of information, but rather real path. Uh, of knowledge that enabled the discovery of a heritage that still remains hidden to many people today. Uh, one possible outcome could be the development of a mobile app that guides user, users in exploring and discovering graffiti within cities. The mobile platform allows reaching a wide audience, uh, ideally tourists, uh, who can create personalized thematic itineraries through simple operation, uh, for example, based on the period of descriptions or by proximity of descriptions like graffiti. The example I uh, showed in the, the slide is one of the criteria that could be defining a distance radius uh, from the user's GPS location. 
uh, that highlights all the accessible sites, providing information on site access, gallery of images, and other useful information content. Uh, furthermore, one of the tools that we found most interesting is the use of augmented reality. Uh, through this tool, we have the ability to work on both the legibility of descriptions by overlaying images uh, onto the target object, as well as adding historical information or written translations. A crucial point we consider is the, in the introduction of all audio files. Our main goal with this tool is to give a voice back to the individuals. We created these inscriptions, making the invisible and incomprehensible signs understandable to the public. And this is just a test we made with the AR software. But I don't know if you can hear anything. No, there is no sound. Okay, there also the sound where we read and translate the No, it's not possible, I think. Okay. <laughs> you can do it live, Michiel. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have seen how the presence uh, of analyzable cases is vast and distributed across different geographical areas, uh, allowing for a wide range of collaboration and extension of studies. Um, secondly, concerning uh, aspects related to the uh, acquisition of these objects, there are certainly interesting developments in the field of image recognition. Uh, in this initial phase, we proceeded with manual operations, uh, but we aim to introduce uh, artificial intelligence algorithm to enhance the image processing workflow. Uh, the goal is to continue developing augmented reality applications by understanding and expanding their potential. And in conclusion, this project try to give a voice to a silent heritage that is often uh, only appreciated for its physical qualities rather than its content or communication. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. very much for this very inspiring insight into the whole workflow of really from the artifact to the dissemination part. Um, are there any <laughs> questions? Yeah, thank you very much for your talk. Um, uh, you mentioned the beginning that you also had the category around the charcoal science, so that you have uh, developed also a best proceeding how to uh, document those signs or just... uh, We really like to uh, develop also these aspects, but for now we just studied inscriptions and scratches. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I'm impressed with the um, geographical scope, the entire city of Rome, and also the chronological span of your project. Uh, um, that seems to me to be at, at how many about how many texts would you, would you imagine studying in this project? I mean, it almost seems overwhelming to me. Yes, <laughs> it is. In fact, we. Um, we made this test on a few examples, mm -hmm. but uh, all this project, it's absolutely uh, expandable uh, because in Rome, we have a vastity of uh, examples that are also stored uh, where no, uh, no one can see them. Mm -hmm. So it could be a really challenging research. And also um, like the... Uh... A uh, great number of examples could lead us to uh, imagine some storytelling path. Uh, like we can, uh, for example, um, made a, a itinerary based on uh, I don't know the presence of women in the descriptions that was not so common uh, in the past. So or uh, with the uh, the geographical proximity. So we can imagine a wide number of paths and itineraries for tourists of everyone who is interested in descriptions and graffiti in general. 
So will your project partner with the ethnographic database of Roma? Oh, um, yes. Yeah. It, it's baked out of La Sapienza with Silvia or I was just curious because I know they were working with Eagle Europeana and that didn't like it fell apart and the EU funding fell apart and so I see yeah, head shaking. So, uh, well, it's another uh, field of study, so it could be a possibility, but for now, I we think... we'd really like to cooperate with this um, this this professionist because, of course, they can understand better. <laughs> oh, yeah. And also identifying this object that, that was like the uh, main challenge for us because uh, regarding inscriptions, it's quite easy to detect the inscription on the wall, but uh, regarding graffiti is really difficult because they are barely seen and uh, of course you have to study and <laughs> yeah, and what, what I was going to say is that your project has so much to contribute. They focus so much on text and presentation of well, really just everything is reduced to type TypeScript and there's no visualization. Yeah. And so, you know, they're stripping all those words off of walls and monuments and and so your approach with visualization, I think, would do so much to enhance. Yeah, I, I, I think so. Also, like when we uh, faced with uh, research on paleography, uh, it was uh, strange for us because we are architects uh, that it was not located on a plan or a map so or on Google. So for us, it was, okay, where's this description? Because like we yeah. uh, think with uh, drawings, so. Yeah. Especially the one in Santa Sabina. Yeah, the one in Santa Sabina was really fine. <laughs> yeah. well, I admire so much of the best information I can see. This inscription is that in the church. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't even post it. We have a question from Bob. Yeah, well, building on that, um, I'm interested because that's like maybe from the research and like the different perspective. I mean, you mentioned like the connection to tourism, and I think that's great potential. Especially for your research and also for like, like interaction and um, there are a lot of opportunities, also like funding opportunities. So uh, my question is if you if you're in contact with like with the city of Rome, like tourist um, administration. I think we have the same thing, so we we do we, a, we really uh, hope so. Yeah, <laughs> really hope so. <laughs> really hope so. Not easy to actually on that one. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> we have to stick. It's not so cute, but I think it's a great um, um, contribution to the city and then the city potential. I, I know, like talking with politicians, it's not easy and all that. But I think, in a long term perspective, I think the tourism is this big thing to perpetrate. I mean, what, what we see now. Berlin, Lisbon, these cities are famous for graffiti. And we try to make Vienna a city like that, but it's, it's a big thing. But I think that's a potential role which can enhance and increase all this work, this research and the production, dissemination of all, all these things. So, yeah, the problem that we are talking about a lot of perspective, I agree with you, but with the politics, a lot of perspective, and are different. Maybe from Europe, not to Rome, it's possible. Maybe we have a solid problem. But in Rome, it's not near its name. Even if it is very full, there's a great information in the sort of reach of everything, it's not so easy to gain time. Yeah, I think it's a question of presentation. It's and trying to get these people interested in that, yeah. but okay. that's because it's beneficial for them. Yeah, sure. It's like a business pitch, but if you get it right, it opens like new doors. And I think that's the way um, to go, which, which can be like in the ocean. Uh, um, I I would I would like to go back to your observation and as an archaeologist, uh, I I see a huge potential of uh, interdisciplinary work in your uh, in your research project. So 
I think we really should get in touch uh, and incorporate the uh, uh, epigraphist and uh, and archaeologists uh, uh, in the project because you can exchange uh, a lot of information and uh, see you see these things in the, in other ways and give them your vision of these things and this as a potential of uh, uh, building knowledge and building yeah. this story path and so on so and especially if you i mean you kind of said well you want to to map uh, and so acquire the images of all inscriptions uh so Inscriptions are the official documents that are around. Sure. So I, I, I'm pretty sure there are the cultural already done of uh, these yes. things that in the yeah. and so on. I can imagine it's very legal or are the very the most famous one. Uh, and, uh, but I mean, there is so much potential for uh, interdisciplinary work, and that goes also into funding programs. Uh, might go into funding programs and get money. And um, so we we can be as archaeologists a big resource. I mean, I didn't study yeah, classical archaeology, but I mean, there must, there must be tons of literature about what you can do yeah. that might facilitate your work already. Yeah, yeah. Well, and of course, it it was already. Uh, really useful for us because all the work made by archaeologists and paleographers. <laughs> <Yes, yes. laughs> and it would be so nice. So <clears throat> this expansion into so into mm -hmm. um, uh, also incorporating in such a very traditional discipline like uh, classical archaeology is. Uh, I think there are people here yeah, that sort of think we would agree, but are we? <laughs> and uh, so it, it incorporating to heritage at the same level of significance, uh, graffiti and uh, as the description. Yes. Uh, yes. It, it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. I've also compared these uh, spontaneous expressions mm -hmm. of, of uh, people and also the institutional ones. And see What's because if there's a relation. So as a woman myself, I I mean the the, the spontaneous is, uh, inscription uh, are also the first document in the Italian language in Rome. The first ever documents in Italian language is uh, <laughs> are bad words written in one church, <laughs> and and so I mean they have and these of course are very well known and very important in the history of, uh, of yeah. Italian and they are very important. Yeah. That's how everybody knows. But I mean, there are thousands of things like the gender issue you, you were mentioning. Mm -hmm. So, okay, let's trace women writing or women mentioned. This is amazing. And, and... I agree that, yeah, this was really a fascinating aspect, this yeah. uh, continuity between uh, different yeah. stages. Yeah. 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 So I um, I love, uh, thank you for patience, Eva. Uh, yeah, sorry for the technical hiccups. I allowed five, six minutes more to have at least 10 minutes discussion.